the Joe Rogan experience. Two, one, boom. Hotep Jesus. How are you, sir? <laughs> I always wanted to say that. I wanted to call somebody that. I need that drop. <laughs> How the fuck do you get a name like Hotep Jesus? How'd that come about? It wasn't my idea. You know, I was... Uh, I had just went through my uh, spiritual awakening. I just oh, left the hip hop industry, and I went through like that mace thing. You know, where you go to. What church are you doing you with the headgear? We, we got you got a lot going on up there. I had to top <laughs> my hair down. This is a black <laughs> thing, man. I got school. You. <laughs> so you have so, spiritual awakening. Yeah, I had this spiritual awakening, and I'm you know tweeting on Twitter like I do. Right. And uh, somebody said. What do you think you are? Some kind of a hotep Jesus? Ooh, and that's I was good. Just like, ooh, that's sexy. <laughs> yes, I do think I'm hotep that, Jesus. That's then, perfect. Then now you own it. Now that I own it. That person is probably like, fuck. <laughs> God damn it. That was a great name I gave that dude. Yeah. I don't know who that person is or was or where they are now. But Shout out to whoever you are. Exactly. And vibe high your Twitter. Why didn't you switch it to hotep Jesus? Can you switch it? Uh, Does anybody own hotep Jesus? I do. You, so you have Hotep Jesus on Twitter, too? Yeah, I reserved it. Oh, dude. I think they could probably swap. Do you have a, a little, one of them cute little blue check marks yet? No. Dude, what the fuck is that? How do you get one of those? I don't know. There's some people, <laughs> there's some people that have those that have like a thousand followers. Like, yeah. How are, you, how are you getting it? Like if you work for the New York Times or some shit? I thought you had the hookup. <laughs> nah, I don't. I like, I'll do I Joe and then I get verified, right? I don't <laughs> know how Twitter feels about me. <laughs> I mean, I think Jack likes me. He's been in a couple of times, but I think the yeah. whole- they're, they're weird, man. They want, I mean, I think all social media, all tech companies want you to tow a line right now. And if you're not towing that line and you're bringing on forbidden guests and you have people that have controversial ideas, you know, they, they have that finger on the button of getting rid of you. They don't know what to do. It's just like radio, mm -hmm. you know, like radio. Uh, a lot of people don't know it, but radio has to play happy songs because happy people buy things. Uh, really? Yeah. That's Well, that's what the studies say, allegedly. The marketing studies and advertising studies say people who are in a good mood tend to buy things, right? So the radio is supposed to play happy songs all day long. And the radio works for the advertisers, kind of like media and you know, right. so on and so forth. So social media is no different. They have advertisers. So if there's people on the platform who are creating disgruntled crowds... It could be hurting the bottom line. Yeah, but Facebook's algorithm actually favors that. The way Facebook has it set up, like say if mm -hmm. if you uh, if you get into debates with people on abortion or something like very controversial, they will start sending that shit to your feed. They will they will prop it will, it will they'll sort of steer it in your direction because the more you engage, the more clicks they get, the more money they get, the more advertising dollars they get. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the Facebook algorithm is quite unique in uh, the way that things can go viral there. Um, Twitter, I feel like uh, the, the Twitter safety and council mm. board. <laughs> yeah, what do they call it? Trust and safety? Yeah, is that what it's yeah, called? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so when I go and look at the entities that contribute to that board, I kind of start saying, oh, okay, I see why certain topics are taboo. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's, and when you, when there's a board those people on the board are the voice. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that have the opinion, you know? So if your group isn't represented, maybe you need to figure out how to get on that board. You know what I mean? Right. I don't know anybody's getting on that board. No, nah, it's not going <laughs> to happen. And you better be left wing if you're going to get on that board. There's, yeah. I don't think there's any right but wing do you think, on that like, board. Is, I think Jack's more like in the middle. Right? Yes. I think he's closer to the middle. I don't think it's Jack. I think it's, you know, Jack's working on a bunch of different projects. Mm -hmm. Um but I think it's probably, you know, whoever else is in the office making the day-to-day -day decisions. Yeah, I like Jack a lot. But I think Jack is in the middle of a gigantic corporation. Mm -hmm. And there's so many people with so many ideas. It, uh, essentially, the founding fathers of our country had a great idea when it comes to freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. They felt like it was very important that you have free speech. And the, the only, you can't be silenced. You can't be you can't be undermined by people who disagree with you because it's dangerous. It's dangerous mm -hmm. when someone can just decide that you can't have a voice anymore and only their voice can be heard. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of seeing that with Twitter and we're kind of seeing that with Facebook and with Google and they're, they're deciding what could be heard and what not can be heard. They think they're doing it for good reasons. They think they're doing it to preserve our culture and our civilization and they want to protect people from the election. Do you know Reddit shut down the Donald, the, yeah. uh, the, the Donald Trump support, uh, Reddit page, yeah, that's not a good idea. The right, right before the dem, yeah, the dem debate, right before the Democratic debate, and you know that was like where all the funny memes come from. 
And look, man, this you you can't do that. I mean, it, it, just because if you have some people that are saying some shit that's bad on there, get rid of those people. Get rid of that. But you can't just shut down a whole forum. Like it seems that seems insane. <sighs> Is there a reason for it? Yeah, it's not shut down. It says it's quarantined. Yeah, for... what the fuck does that mean? Does it have a disease? Uh, it's sort of like <laughs> temporary. It's got Ebola. It happens to people. They got to do something. I don't. It says there's violent threats. I'm looking to see what. Happened. Oh, okay. Repeated well, misbehavior. I don't violent know. threats. Mm. We'll see. Mm. Mm. Skeptical. Very. It seems weird, right? I, I feel like all I mean, of this stuff is it, like we're seeing what the first amendment is really all about why it exists we're seeing it play out yeah. with all these social media sites i really think that but you know the, my thing is with like the reddit thing right it's very easy to create an actor right the left can create a right wing actor online to pretend like it's something it else sure it's, it's something else they can go into reddit do something malicious to get the whole reddit banned right or like an get agent provocateur quarantine. yeah exactly and uh I never leave that off the table when I look at instances like this. When mm. you say, oh, somebody was, it's the internet. Everybody's anonymous. You know, right. <laughs> are you tracking this back to who it is? You know what I mean? Or do you know it's conservative? Do you know it's a Republican? Are you sure? So, you know, I take those things, these pieces of information with a grain of salt. Yeah, you should. But is this election meddling? It kind of is, right? Is what it feels if, like. If you're killing a whole sub, well, it does, it depends. I mean, so, well, so if they're really, that would be really interesting if it turns out that it was someone from the left that was posing as someone from the right in order to shut down a forum and pretend there's death threats. Or, but I mean, you look at YouTube, right? And what what's been happening with YouTube, uh, even just the algorithm. You know, uh, I'm pretty good with keywords. I do SEO and marketing. So when I type in certain keywords to find certain things. I know what's going to come up or what type of content comes up. Now, when I type in those keywords, it's like ABC, NBC, ABC, mm -hmm. CNN. And I'm like, that's not what I wanted. They, they don't even talk about these keywords. What right. are you talking about? Yeah. You know? So when you start seeing that, you start thinking about Ingsoc and Orwell and 1984 mm -hmm. and socialism and communism and fascism and uh, the degradation of society and um, uh, a lot of control coming down. Um you know, people, uh, you know, in some ways it's like, was the Internet created for freedom or was it created for control? Right. So uh, there's two different pathways. We could probably look at that. But it seems like in many ways they set us up to be controlled. And they're doing it through monopolies. Google controls search through YouTube and Google. And by what you search, you can think it's a truth. But what did Kanye say? Kanye say Google lied to you, mm. you know. So Kanye he, says a lot of crazy shit, though. You gotta really think about that. <laughs> he does, and I like crazy. <coughs> I do too. I'm a big fan of crazy. I'm a little crazy, a lot of crazy sometimes. <laughs> so I appreciate his crazy side more than his calm side. Mm. Well, great things come from wild thoughts, right? Exactly. I think the internet was initially created to exchange information, and then when it got loose to the general public, they realized what a crazy idea that was. Mm -hmm. What I think we're seeing right now with the algorithms is that these corporations are influencing these companies to say, hey, when someone's looking for these things, how about you send them over to ABC? How about you send them over to NBC? How about you, you know, like we want to be able to get the first views on these things. So if mm -hmm. someone's searching for that, I don't know how they do it. I don't know what they, whether they have agreements with them. Maybe, I mean, there's also a lot of copywritten shit that's on there that could get YouTube in some significant trouble if they ever really decided to pursue it. Right. I mean, how many videos are on YouTube that people have on their channel that are just straight off of Fox News or NBC News? Or, I mean, there's a lot of like copyright protected content that right. YouTube is essentially profiting off of. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they make a ton of money off of that stuff. Yeah. Um, so they might have deals where they say, look, we'll send these people to, you know, this first. Yeah. And that's why I say, you know, that's where the control comes in. You know, the advertisers. Mm -hmm. The advertisers are the ones paying, you know, for the platform to be yeah. a thing. It's not us, the users, that are paying for it. YouTube's free. So who's paying, right? Yeah. They're, they're, they're monetizing us. They're monetizing us, the users and the viewers. Yeah, that's where it gets tricky, right? Because as soon as the advertisers get on board, they say, look, we, uh, you know, we want to give you money, but this content is not advertiser friendly. Right. Yeah, and then they start moving stuff around and demonetizing things. And, and with demonetization, the real thing that they're doing in a lot of ways, whether it's intentional or not, mm -hmm. is you're influencing what people post. 
you're kind of se- you're you're asking them to self censor because if you say hey yeah. you guys want to discuss abortion rights or you know like there's there's some things that you start discussing them and they will automatically de- demonetize you yeah well who is the girl that put out the uh abortion documentary right and they Which girl's snatched on? that down i forget what it's called um i'm bad at memorizing these things but there was an uh, uh basically an anti-abortion thing that exposed some things about abortion as a documentary and i believe the day it went up it got shut down she had to re-upload it um was it lauren southern might have been yeah, there's Southern. those two cute white chicks that yeah. everybody thinks are super racist. Lauren Southern and Tammy, what's the other one? Tammy, Tammy Lauren. Lauren. Tommy uh, Lauren. Yeah. Tommy Lauren. So she did a documentary, but then you have like uh, the James O'Keefe thing where, mm-hmm. you know, he put up the exposing uh, YouTube and then that got, you know, obviously they're going to take it down. <laughs> well, the most recent one that exposed Google, right? Right. Yeah, I've been asking people about that. I'm like, okay. Break this down for me. Is there any way that this could have been deceptively advertised or deceptively edited? Like, it's, it seems to me yeah. like they're saying that they're going to manipulate search results and they're going to manipulate the way people see things because of the 2016 election. They don't want that happening again in 2020. That's mm-hmm. what it seems when that's, I'm looking at it. Absolutely. That's exactly what it looks like. Could it be doctored? Of course it could. You know, that's, that's, yeah. that's always possible. But, um, when you go and experience it for yourself, like what I was talking about with, you know, doing a keyword search, you start yeah, seeing the parallels. Um, and then, you know, Uncle Hotep, you know, his his channel was, you know, doing great. And then the algorithm flipped. And next thing you know, like he wasn't making the same money anymore. Mm. So it's like I don't have to go to some doctor video or whatever video to understand this problem. The people around me are being affected by it. You know, this is a primary source. I don't have to look at somebody on the internet. Um, but I don't know. It's, it's, in a way, I don't like playing victim with the topic, right? It's their platform. Do what you want with it. We choose to be there. We don't have to be there. There's not another game in town, though. It's not. It's weird, right? When you think about how big the internet is, and there's only one YouTube. Right. I mean, Vimeo and all those other ones, they're great, but. Well, you know, I always relate it to the black community. You know, the black community always say, oh, you know, white people this, white people that, white people this, white people that. They're not giving us opportunity. And it's always like, well, is that the only opportunity? Can you not create your own opportunity? You know what I mean? So I never want to take a victim mentality and say, oh, you know, let's take Google to court, mm, you know, all this stuff. It's like, if you want to do that, that's fine. That's not how I'm looking at this. I'm looking at it long term, like hooking up with Andrew Torb over at Gap, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And building tools. So, you know, we do uh, the coinbitsapp.com and uh, creators can actually, um, it's it's based upon approval right now, but creators can go on there and receive Bitcoin as a donation. You know, so we're circumventing the things that happen like with the deep platforming at Patreon, right? And the other payment platforms for creators. So we're creating tools to circumvent these things. So that's how I look at it. I'm like, oh, Google's doing this? Great. This is great a great opportunity here let me seize it and let me build it and be you know the alternative Mm. you know i love to see that um is the alternative going to be youtube and as popular of course not it's just not but it's still a viable option you can still communicate with your people the number one communication tool for an influencer with their with their uh community is email build your email list right People still subscribe to your email list, right? Mm -hmm. That's not YouTube. That's not Google. That's your email list. That's your contact list. So it's like you can complain about YouTube or Google, but you can build your audience almost anywhere. It depends on how powerful you are. Are you powerful enough to convince people to come to this other platform or to wherever you are? Mm. A lot of people are powerful enough to pack a room at $2,000 a ticket. You tell me you can't get somebody to go to another platform for free? Who charges $2,000 a ticket? Uh, I mean, a lot of these speakers, you know, like the Tony Robbins type cats. Did he really? He charges two thousand bucks. I think he charges like ten. Yes, I think I think some of his stuff is like ten. <sighs> yeah, but he's doing like these week long events where everybody gets together. I'm gonna change your life. He's like doing karate kicks <laughs> well, and shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> when you well that's the, how you get the bigger check you yeah. gotta create a bigger experience yeah. so it's like alright so we'll do a one day at 2k right it's like well how do I get 10k it's like well let's just extend it for the week and you know yeah. add like you know the kickboxing class and <laughs> you know we'll chat yeah. in the sauna you just you know create that's part yeah. of marketing you know yeah. Um, but yeah I'm not complaining about these tech companies 
these tech com- companies, man. I'm not scared of these dudes, man. These the, the content is us. The content is certainly us. And uh, like I get what I got from talking to Jack and Vidya was it's almost impossible to manage a site like that. Mm-hmm. The, the Just the influx of no- – like I used to have a, a message board on my website. One of the things that I noticed before we shut it down was I was getting – thousands and thousands of Russian emails that were signing <laughs> up for my website. This is, you remember that, Jamie? <clears throat> this is years ago. This is mm. like three years ago. Okay. I mean, fucking tha- like tens of thousands of Russian email addresses were signing up, like similar addresses. Mm. It was something like the IRA, something like the Internet Research Agency, which does that, which is responsible for all those fake pages on Facebook and Google and Instagram and all that shit. And they were signing up for websites and that had message boards, mm-hmm. and then they would jump on and pretend that they were whatever the fuck they were. Right. Pretend that they were a social justice warrior. Pretend that they were with Black Lives Matter. Pretend, oh, yeah. And they just start fights, start arguments. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is fascinating. And then when it, when it also happened, and then it happened with Facebook, and it became a big part of the election, you realize, like, this is like a concerted effort to use these platforms oh, yeah, to yeah. wiggle. So when you're Jack or you're whoever runs Google, you have to look at that and go, okay, how the fuck do we manage that? I mean, if we're in the free speech we should just let these people manipulate everybody right yeah, but- yeah let it be wild wild west <laughs>